cocktails that are stylish, movies great or phony, and how Tony should win, and Matthew, and Matthew should win, and Tony. But in the meantime, talking about film in the meantime, the Arkin brothers talk about movies. <laughs> There's a little addition to that at the end. How do we like that new uh, that new intro? It's new to me. I hadn't seen it yet. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I love think, it. I think we, you know, we're gonna get pushed out of a job here because uh, I think I think these youngsters are coming up behind us and they're gonna take over. Hey, it's the law of the land, isn't it? Yeah, it's the way um, it works. That was just. That's, I want to, you know what? I want to see that again. Let's play it again. Uh, Talking about cocktails that are stylish, movies great or phony, and how Tony should win, and Matthew, and Matthew should win, and Tony. But in the meantime, talking about film. Well, you can. Now you can do that. That is just fantastic. Uh, yeah, they, they're uh, they're really uh, taking names here while yeah. they're kicking ass. That, did I that, tell that's you? tough. I did tell you, but our, our audience doesn't know. I, I got to meet uh, Sophia and Alexis and Elia. And, right. And I, Lu Louise and Anatoly, the, the entire family. I heard a little bit about it. I wish I'd been there. I it wish you were like Y'all are having some business meetings without me, and uh, I'm just hoping I'm not going to get cut out. Like, is there maneuvering happening? Like, what's going on? Sorry, you're out, Tom. I know it was you. I <laughs> yeah. know it was you, Tony. Yeah. You're nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you're nothing to me now. You're not a friend. You're not a brother. So, um... How was how was dinner? It sounds like you also went to a restaurant that I love and I haven't been we to. We went to a restaurant that you love, similar to a restaurant that you and I used to go to all the time when you and I would go to La Nueva Rampa. La Nueva Rampa, yeah, that, that place was great. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got there at three, you know, and meeting a family that you, you've you spoken to some of these people on the phone, you know, I thought, yeah, we'll sit down and we'll have a little lunch. We're meeting at three o'clock. We left at 7.30. We sat there for four and a half hours. So there's a lot of negotiations, in other words. A there's a lot of stuff. I'd love to be filled in, is all I'm saying. <laughs> there were no Just as a part of the show, as right. as your, you know, as your partner and co-host and all that. Just it would just be nice. Well, the thing that's really sad is that they gave me uh they gave me some gifts. And uh for those of you who are not watching, I'm taking a sip of one of the gifts right now. Oh, I tried to make it a little bit audible. Um, Alexis and Sophia, uh, their parents, Louise and Anatoly, own a distillery. And they make this aguadente. That is, this is the fig aguadente, which is really extraordinary. You're going to enjoy this when you get out here. What? Uh, how would you describe an aguadente? I don't know. I've never heard of that before. It's like uh, it's like grappa or eau de vie. Oh, okay. Um, but this is a fig one, so it's a little. Wow. Small. It's got a real forward uh, fig uh, uh, finish. It's it's just it's it's delicious. Well, it's it looks good. It sounds fantastic, and and you had a great time. And it's 870 proof too. I think is uh, so, you know. So I I may be asleep by the end of the show. It's going to be a fun show. We're going to do. We're going to have a good time. I'm, um, I'm drinking a lot of coffee. You're drinking. You're drinking early. It's not. Oh, that no, early. it's that's not early. Actually, it's late. It's really late for me to drink coffee. In fact, I yeah, yeah. Throw shade yeah. at that. So, uh, but our producers, you know, some of them are already slacking off. They're they're on a, a train right now apparently they had more important things to do just because one of them is starring in a tv series that's about to start airing she 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 oh that's so important 
Well, like I said, if I had been at this meeting, I might be abreast <laughs> of some of these things, but I'm not. I don't. I feel at a disadvantage. Now, yeah. I know there's a TV show going on. Big show. I, Paper Girls coming on Amazon Prime. It's a big deal. Well, you we're, know. I'm telling you, we're going to be working for them in about three weeks. We're going to be their, their assistants. I, well, you know, as far as I know, I'm, it might be, have already happened because I don't <laughs> know what happened at this meeting. It was just a lot of eating and talking. Okay, not, you're not being pushed out. You you are an integral, an integral part of the show. It's just that we're not going to talk about movies anymore. Bingo. <laughs> just been some changes. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about movies, booze, and uh, uh, what what did you do? How was your week? My week was good. A little frenetic, but good. Um, I was holding down the fort while Amelia. Went to uh, do a uh, a performance of Coal Country, the show that she was in, in West Virginia. In West Virginia, so they did that. Uh, went really well. I wish I'd seen it, um, but I had to stay here and teach, and so I I held down the fort here teaching while she did that, and we started uh, working at our new studio, our new school, which went really well. So it's been busy, but but uh, good good stuff. That's great. How's the booze business? The booze business is is right now 24 hours a day because we're getting ready to launch. Um, we will be bottling uh, the second week in June. We should be available on uh, shelves. Is that different than bottling Rage? The kind is, of, this is a different kind of bottling. It's, yeah, it's a little bit different than that. Um, uh, but uh, there's just so many... Uh, you know, we've been working on all these different strands of things to get them all to happen at the same time. And it's coming to a head with our PR company and our SEO company and our web design company and the late, you know, just everything all has to land at the same time. Right. It feels a little bit like you're uh, driving a, a, a truck chase, uh, driving an SUV, chasing uh, another SUV three four days ago and and trying to figure out where it is and catch up to it even though it's not there that's complicated and yet you managed to explain it a little bit better than they did in the in a film that this reminds me of oh yeah yeah no <laughs> i think we're gonna get into it because um yeah we we may be getting into it on this movie I'm, I'm oh, okay sure. oh good good <laughs> Great. Uh, all right. Okay. But, but but before we get into that, did you watch anything else this week? Did you have time to watch anything else this week? Oh boy. Oh boy. You always ask the hard questions right at the beginning of the show, and I'm not. I. What do I say? Um, I'm gonna say no. Once no? again, no. Huh? I've been too busy to watch uh, many things. Although, no, that's not entirely true. I will say Amelia and I have been uh, taking a look at this show, Open Range, the uh, Josh Brolin show. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm not going to say anything else except that we're watching it. We're like three episodes in, and I will watch a fourth and uh, report back to you. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm still deeply ensconced in Wire in the Blood. Thanks. In isn't it pronounced ensconced? <laughs> yes, it is right. Yes. <laughs> because it is that is a reference. Tony is making a reference to the fact that the show is English, so I'm enjoying it with scones. Um, what is this one called? Badger Town, Badgerton. Wire in the Blood. Oh, you're watching, still watching Wire in the Blood. Okay, still watching Wire in nice. The blood. But so I you like you like it to you like it enough to keep up with it. Oh, I, I, it's like I can't wait to get done with my – that's my the end of my day. It's like Great. my day is over when I can stop doing anything else and stop thinking about anything else, and that's my private time or watching an episode yeah. of something fun like that. I the, 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 That show is pretty hypnotic. I, I actually um, – I was turned on to it by my dear friend Eric, and he uh, he was like, hey, it's pretty spooky. And I was like, oh, I like spooky. Wasn't prepared for quite how – it's a – that's a – I mean, maybe that's like classic British crime for you, but it seemed like inordinately unnerving. It's actually not as dark as a lot of these other things that I'm watching. 
it's it's a little lighter than some of the other British stuff that I want. It's a spooky show though. It is great theme, great theme song. I remember that I couldn't track it down anywhere when the show came out. So I had to like I literally like old school recorded it on some uh, like an MP3 recorder off of my speakers. And wonderful performance. Yeah. And then I watched another Denzel movie this week. I watched Safe House, which somehow I had never seen. Uh, Denzel and Ryan Reynolds. Um, Ryan Reynolds as a child, almost. Um, Isn't he still? Kind of, yeah. yeah. And then I watched a great uh, new French movie um, that I thought was spectacular. Um, a French a French film? You don't usually watch foreign films. I don't watch a lot of foreign movies, but, you know, actually, um, I might kind of hijack uh, the show tonight. Um, because I think instead of instead of talking about deja vu, I I, I want to show you this French movie. So it, it, just bear with me. Okay. You know, the, it's the, the French make the best films. They 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 know what's going on. Yeah, it's called We're, the Sad Sisters. The Sad Sisters. Yeah, just uh, extraordinary. Um, is this that, is from the uh, Modern Alienation trilogy. <laughs> yeah. Showing at at the at MoMA right now. Yes, I think I think so. Yeah. Well, actually, that's a a short film by Sophia and Alexis Rosinski, our our producers and soon to be employers. Um, that's a lovely film. Um, you know, it really does capture like no other movie I've seen the, the ennui of checking into a hotel you can't really afford. I've <laughs> never really seen that uh, hit home the way that this does. Yeah. And, and we've all had that experience. It's a melancholy thing to happen to you. Yeah. I'm spending yeah. more money than I should. <laughs> and the wistful, the wistful look in the elevator is great. Yeah. And I like the fact that the end of the movie is the same as the beginning, except it's not quite. Well, it's fitting uh, because it fits in with tonight's theme of deja vu. I'm not surprised entirely. Was this all part of part of this? This I won't harp on the dinner. I won't say I won't mention it again. I just want to know if this film was discussed during dinner. We will continue to harp on the dinner. No, the film was not discussed. Okay. I knew nothing about this film until okay. they sent it to us today. All right. You 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 weren't left out. In One fact, day maybe we, you'll show a movie of mine. We were wistful <laughs> the entire the entire meal that you weren't there. Sad and wistful. Yeah, I'm sure you were, as you were eating that fantastic Cuban food. And you know what I had? You know what I ordered? Uh you ordered uh, the garlic chicken. What? I don't know. Uh, the picadillo. Well, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with Picadillo. It's literally one of the restaurants that I've been to that I would dream about, have literal dreams about at night when I was sleeping about the meal. <laughs> oh, like not daydreams, but night sleeping. Literally, dreams. literally sleeping in, in the night in bed, completely asleep, dreaming about that restaurant and about eating there. Restaurant. Yeah. Only so, I think only two other places that ever happened to me. I've dreamt of, of eating at Peter Luger's a couple of times. Wow! Yeah. There you I go. mean, I've I've eaten there, but I've also had dreams about eating there. <laughs> okay. We'll get. We'll let's talk about the movie. I don't mind. All right, we have to talk about the movie. So, um, tonight's movie is um, Deja Vu, starring Denzel Washington, and. Uh, and Paul Matt Cap Craven. And Matt Craven. <laughs> Starring Matt Craven. 
Yeah. Who just basically gets killed. Basically, Matt Craven is like he's doing a, like a crime recreation on a History Channel show. Yeah. In the middle of this movie. Yeah. He gets killed. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's a terrorist attack uh, where uh, a uh, uh, a ferry in New Orleans is is blown up with 450 or so people on it. Sailor. <laughs> It is yeah. ginormous explosion. Ginormous explosion, and I thought uh, exceptionally well done, but we'll get to that. Um, and uh, the ATF, is, along with many other government agencies, are called in to investigate and catch the perpetrator of this heinous crime. And um, uh, Denzel Washington is our intrepid ATF investigator who is brought into a special unit of the federal government that has found out that you can look back in time uh, precisely four days because of some quirk in physics. They can look back in time four days. They can maybe send something back, maybe a rat, maybe some. Can I just clarify one point that at first this is described as being something that's purely uh, done through satellite imagery and combined uh, cell phones, all kinds of things to combine to create a 3D simulacrum of four days ago. Yes. And okay. and Denzel is smart enough to rapidly figure out, you guys are snowing me. This is not uh, a uh, a digital record of what's happening. You are somehow actually looking into the Akashic record, if you would, or whatever it is of the past. And um, I prefer quinoa, but thank you. I, <laughs> whatever. I mean, um, you are, oh, I'm sorry, I'm Doug Carlin, ATF. Yeah. And uh, he figures out that they're actually looking into the past. Um, and, and that past that they're looking into is running Contempt, it almost con it's moving at the same speed as we are. So you can only look at what is exactly, you know, four days and three hours behind us for because of something to do with the way the space time continuum folds back on itself or whatever. Is there some dancing? Is there music? Is there a girl uh, dancing? What what happens in this movie? <laughs> what what are you talking about? Look, it's impossible. <laughs> It's impossible to describe. It is. It is hard. It's very. It's a very complex uh, plot. I said, uh, explain it to me, not talk science. Yeah, I, okay. I feel his pain. Uh, yeah, um, but uh, you know, I will. I will defend the plot of this movie. Uh, it. I was able, if I could get a flow chart, which I'm not going to do, a whiteboard and a marker. I do feel that it makes sense within the within the world created by the movie i feel they justify it and that it makes sense and i will defend that <laughs> in spite okay. of the fact that you're looking at me like it's no, in the I, I don't know well i don't know that that's I, I i don't think i i don't i'm not i'm not taking a hard pass on this movie i i there's a lot about it that i thoroughly enjoyed i i really did have a good time um the thing is, though, that I was quite invested uh, 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 up until a certain t moment in time, after which I felt that I was in a car that had gone off the side of a cliff and was falling directly down to the to the earth, whereupon I smashed logic apart. Uh Okay, well, maybe I can help you. I might be able no, to No, and it's not a logic thing. I, you can't help me. You can't help this movie, what it did, <laughs> when it... When, see, I thought we were going to agree up on this. With it, with it, great, amazing, fantastic. Whoa, okay. Okay. Uh, where are it we, never, what? It never lost me. Okay. So I want to know when wh what the point was that it lost you. Well, I'm still trying to figure that out because there were... Well, you know, I don't give a rat's ass what you can accept. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that's I'm Bruce Greenwood, baby. Um, okay, they lost me. They lo- okay. I have my notes. When exactly does the movie drop off a cliff? I said. <laughs> when the FBI team is all flustered about her getting naked in the videos because she's taking a shower and they start turning into 12 year olds like, oh, I don't know what to do. Or this lady's taking a shit. They're spies. They look at people doing everything in the world all day. And I found that to be took me right out of the movie. Took it went it went to it went pretty juvenile there pretty quick. Oh, I see. I bought that. Because no, I didn't buy that. You didn't buy that. Come on. I, I did buy it. I, I bought it because Eric, Erica Alexander was there. And and this was 2006. And I, and if, if Erica Alexander had been part of the surveillance team, those guys would have sat there and watched her take the shower and have no compunction about it. And it was the fact that she was there being like, it was, it wasn't that it happened that way. It was how they handled it. That I felt was ridiculous. I felt that it was, they instantly turned into 12 year olds. And I just didn't think that that became a little bit, the first note of silliness for me, where I was like, I I think they would handle this in a more mature fashion. At most they might've gone, are you if this bothers you you don't have to watch this part we do need to see this so they obviously need to watch all of it like they obviously do so getting flustered about it i thought was mm-hmm. was pretty juvenile and i lame that i blame the writer of shrek entirely <laughs> so um <laughs> okay. then i thought well maybe it fell off a cliff when they started to try to explain the time travel and and Adam Goldberg started saying things like the Einstein Rosen Bridge, and I went, I listen, I really came for some popcorn and a good time, and now Serpico is telling me about about bending paper. I've already seen that scene in a movie, so they didn't have to do it. Um, Adam Rosenberg, brilliant, it, it must be said, because okay. he's the cousin of of our producers. But you know, did you I, know that? I, I I don't know it. He's great. My point is that my he point is, is that he's asked to explain time. The, the movie comes to a screeching halt for the so that so that Adam Goldberg can explain the Einstein Rosen Bridge. And I felt that that was um, that was a that was a time when all the actors in that room started to get nervous a little bit that things were out of control, <laughs> and. Um, I don't blame him. I don't blame any of the actors. I think, in fact, that's why I got kind of disappointed was because I felt like the actors were all showing up. And I, the, the script or something wasn't supporting it. Now, the notes that we got suggest maybe there was some friction here. Oh, you know, I found I'm, a way to fold space back onto itself. I, I'm actually apparently wrong about something. Adam Goldberg is Elia's cousin, not Sophia and Alain. Okay. So well, that still counts as something, and I it counts as a lot. If I, and if I, if well, if I had said something about Adam Goldberg that was disparaging, it was uh, not the case because no, I, you didn't. You didn't I think he's it. terrific. You were talking about, but see, I mean, I do think it's funny that Serpico is running the the high tech time travel machine. I don't, I don't know why that struck me funny, but it did. See, I, well, I can't say I wasn't expecting this call. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the the uh, the um, Einstein Rosen Rosenblatt's uh, pastrami sandwich okay. scene because. I'm often the guy in a room who says, no, wait, let me explain to you. And everybody tunes out and says, we don't. So you're that. usually Serpico. I'm usually Adam Goldberg in, in these situations. Right. Well, then I thought maybe it was that they fell off a cliff when Denzel's driving at 60 miles an hour with a, with a time travel helmet on his head. And he's killing more people on the highway than we're on the boat that exploded. Oh, <laughs> shit. I won't even continue. There were points at which I thought it fell off a cliff. Okay. I can see him. He's right in front of me. I don't, Who you know, I'm not going to lay this at the feet of any actors. He's going to feel that in the morning. Um, so, or could it have been the moment where Denzel climbs into a microwave oven in his underpants? (laughs) I don't know. Maybe that was it. 
perhaps when oh, it. Oh my God! <laughs> you are you are unforgiving. Um, I gotta. You know, here's 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 how I feel about it, and I think this is great because here I am unforgiving. Okay, take it out wide, give the pigs some room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am unforgiving about um uh films that have uh, 75 million dollar budgets and make me go come hold on a second i have a problem with that i'm more forgiving for a low budget movie or a weird art movie that you hate so with such vitriol well i hate <laughs> vitriol. yeah i do i hate them. you do um so i just think it's for 75 million dollars maybe it could have been a little tighter on that uh, storytelling <laughs> part of it but I, whatever okay All i'm right. getting the bad stuff out of the way fast first because okay. there's a lot i liked okay um i i had one thing that that i felt needed to be addressed more i wanted more of um denzel's backstory okay hinted at hinted at only in that dialogue about how you lose you lose everybody you love in this. Well, family. and they say, and they also say, someone says in the background, like, yeah, he doesn't have any family. Every, you know. Yeah. They mention. Okay. All right. Okay. That's a great moment. That moment, that little clip that Ilya just played is actually a great moment in the movie. And, and the, I think what what it was for me was that I was I was so I thought they did such a great job with the first half hour that I was like, you guys don't need time travel now. You really don't. They really didn't. I was so, I was so on board with the first description of the technology and the case. I thought they did a really interesting job at making that crime scene, uh, which was pretty complicated, um, kind of understandable and what they all had to do to figure out what to do. I thought they did such a great job of it. I, I didn't need this, this the science fiction part. I literally didn't need the time travel. And I thought that that the strength of the movie up until that point had been this like, you know, beautifully shot Tony Scott kind of like kind of glossy, but but, you know, well acted portrayal of this uh, of this event. And then and then we went to a movie that was like we switched channels to a movie that I hadn't paid. I hadn't signed up for. <laughs> like, where did this then, intelligent movie go? But without the time, tra- right? Without the time travel, there's no. Uh, then she's dead. So what? Here's a monitor, right? <laughs> now the monitor is broken. I I think it would have been more interesting if they had gone more subtle, Cronenberg with this technology rather than go, oh, it's a time machine. I like the idea that you could see four days in the back through technology and that maybe there's something else going on with it that we take a while to figure out rather than sitting in the middle of the room with everybody and then going like, we're going to time travel. We're going to send We're going to send things back like in time physically. And then we're going to send you back in time physically, but we've really never done it with anything but a piece of paper before. It all it it all just got too sci-fi for me, I think, you know? I'm so sad now. What the hell? Yeah. That this, was about going back in time. I made you I don't mean to make you sad. You you can fight for my fight with me about it. I, I just, you know. I just didn't. I, I had to say that I was thoroughly enjoying much of this, and then uh, and then they introduced some very to me some elements that were like, I now I can't believe any of it. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. See, I knew going in that it was a time travel movie. So well, I, I did was, too. I That's was the whole month we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a smarty pants. I'm sorry. But I mean. But but if you take the time travel out of this movie, then we can't do it this month, and it's not a time travel movie. So it I know my I'm tr- I'm tr- what I'm hoping for is a deeper exploration of the idea that they could have stopped at that first idea 
and made a much more interesting movie with that cast who were all great actors and made a psychological drama about the effects of this technology in a much more much more interesting way than just they go back in time. I, I yeah. felt that was unnecessary at a but certain then point. it would have belonged to we we look back in time month rather than the time travel month. I refuse to uh alter my view because it doesn't suit our programming okay. on our on our show. Okay. We're shutting it down. What? I've gone too far. I've been too negative. No, I've insulted no, Adam no. Goldberg without meaning to. I'm not invited to the meetings oh. anymore. I don't even know why you put up with me. <laughs> well, I can't say I wasn't expecting this call. Um, me neither, <laughs> Adam. I I can't either. <laughs> well, you you know me. We we've spent time together. One one might say you we grew up together. Um, you could say that. Well, we didn't grow up, but what <laughs> no, when, right. when, when we were doing the stuff that most people call growing up we were together yeah and you know that i i love the i love the love story and the sappy ending and i want everything to work i want everybody to be happy i want everything to work out for everybody right and and this movie a does that and then if you get over the 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 okay they're gonna put time travel in it if you get over that hump and accept that they're going to do that. I think they did some really fascinating stuff with the time travel because there's all this discussion about whether or not you can go back in time and change anything. And sort of what we find out at the end of the movie is, is in a way that he didn't change anything because when, when he, when he in the in the present day timeline goes to ex- look at her apartment after she's dead, he goes to his apartment and there are all these bloody clothes there. And then when he goes back in time, he gets shot, and we find out that it's his bloody clothes and the, uh, not the bloody clothes, but the the rags that were used to clean him up. That all of the blood in her apartment was his from when he was shot going back in time. So it, 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 the, the loop is, is contained within the story rather than the, the past being changed because yeah. of the story. Yeah, I'll agree. I agree with that. Which I, I, might, think, yeah. I think that sort of the way they fold it, they fold time in and around itself plot wise is really sat was really satisfying to me. Okay, um, I I would say go half there with you and say that I liked the I liked the science fiction description of the time travel. I thought the concepts were great. I thought both sets of concepts were great. You know, the at first when you think it's spy spyware technology, right? Uh, like recon video and stuff. Um, that was really cool and well thought out. The description of three to, four days behind is was really interesting. I bought all of that. I even bought like you like you're talking about their their philosophy of time travel in the movie I thought was was interesting and and made sense. I just I just thought that the movie degenerated into a really ridiculous stupid action movie for no goddamn good reason and then and so instead of elaborating on these these themes and 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 in, instead of just telling me all this information in one big info dump that a lot of it was on Adam Goldberg, show me that for the next hour as we progress through the story. So there will be more surprises with how those things are developed. It just turned into like, it, it was like basic Star Trek, oh, time travel explained. Right. And then we're off to the same kind of silly action beats where I'm like, I thought we were in an intelligent thriller. We're, well, let me we're, throw something out there. If if we could go back in time, mm-hmm. <laughs> see what I did there. I do. Um, if we could go back in time and take out, really leave most of the movie completely intact, but take out the car chase, the truck, the car chase, that whole thing, but have him go back in time and do the invest the investigation part of it. What would you think about that? Because for me, the car chase was the only part of the movie that to me turned into, 
oh, we've got this great idea. He's driving the car, but looking at the stuff from four days ago and running the, you know, and chasing, which that part actually made no sense. There's no reason for him to be, if, if they could zero in on, on, uh, Jim, Jim Caviezel. Yeah. If they could zero in on Jim Caviezel and follow him in his car, with then, their technology. Yeah, they, they don't need he's, him he's, running he's, around he's, behind him. Then, well, how is he going to kill thousands of uh, of people on the highway if he doesn't do We that? need to chase him with the goggle rig. You chase need to chase goggle. him with the goggle rig. Well, you know, you want that line in a movie. Though. You do. You do want that line in a movie. I also love about this movie that you, you can actually see an interesting movie star moment kind of happening off screen. You know they meant him to wear that helmet more than he did in this movie yeah. he's got it on for about a minute and a half in the car and then he kind of like it's like i don't think i want to wear this anymore and he yeah, takes right. it off and he puts it and then he just carries it around clearly denzel was like you know what no i don't think i'm gonna wear that for this movie not oh, shit. there you yeah. go the helmet's coming off yeah um what about um let's talk about some of the the stylistic stuff they did with the with the boat at the beginning and the boat at the end and all of that emotional setup of the sailor go that's a cool gesture when yeah. he smells his hands did you not like that? I actually no, liked I, it. I did like it and I understood it, but I uh, at first it was just like, wow, that's an interesting, weird moment. But it makes but I sense. Did. I, I was so struck by that to be an entrance into a movie of that sort of gathering oneself. Um, you know what I thought he was might me might have been doing actually? What was actually like uh like getting his uh olfactory senses working to see if he could like reset and think about smelling uh um accelerants or something i, I don't know it seemed like it was part of what he does to prepare you know Ooh. um wow. it's cool look how you know denzel is great it, it's really it it's you can't what are you gonna say the guy carries a movie around like it's a duffel bag it's oh, like it's unbelievable he is he's at his height in this movie. yeah this is great denzel time period you know and him working with tony scott is always exciting because i feel like you can see denzel's the kind of actor i feel like really wants to work with a director that he respects and if he's not getting that I feel like he turns off a little bit and he's just like, okay, we're just, I'm going to do my thing and we'll get out of here. But he seems invested in the whole movie when he works with Tony Scott in a really cool way. I mean, not, I'm not saying he's not invested all the time, but I just feel like he, he enjoy, he seems to enjoy making Tony Scott movies. I also, and, yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm, I hope I'm right. I think I am. It looks like I am. In terms of the casting, I thought that every single role in this movie big and small was spot on. Yeah. Great casting. It was just even to the tiniest role, like Gary Grubbs, Gary Grubbs as the, the coast guard fellow who, who meets him at the beginning and then meets him again at the end and, and shows him over to Paula Patton. Right. Gary Grubbs, who's one of those guys you've seen 18 million times. And here he is in this tiny role in this movie. Um, and he's spectacular. Enrique Castillo as as her dad just knocks it out of the park. Um, I will say the only thing I will say is as great as he was, I did think that maybe he he was in on it because he didn't seem as upset as I thought he might have been, might have been. I did I, for a while. I was like, is there some weird conspiracy involving her father? Because there was something so restrained about him. I, I was an interesting choice, and he's a really good actor. I just didn't. I, for a minute, I thought it was like they're trying to tell me something. I thought he was just in shock, and then, and then, where it all came together for me was at the end of his scene where he says to Denzel, uh, "I need her to matter to you." That's a great line, too. Yeah, um, and. Uh, 
Eldon Henson, who was spectacular in the series of Daredevil, uh, is is was was great. Adam Goldberg, great. Eric Alexander, who later went on to be spectacular and Get Out, is great. I agree with all this. I think I, I, I'm going to say that uh, the big surprise for me, because Tony Scott is, you know, he's a talented guy. He, he he always casts interesting, very realistic kind of people as smaller parts. I was kind of taken with the stars who showed up here. I mean, I, Val Kilmer was like so just there to do his role yeah, and not so try funny. to be Val Kilmer at all. Like it was just, I, I thought, probably my favorite scene in the movie. I have two favorite scenes. Three. I have three that I actually loved. Okay. Uh, maybe they line up with yours. Um in a lot of ways, my favorite scene is the scene early on at night on the ferry when, or on the dock when Val enlists Denzel into the team. And it's right after he finds out that Matt Craven, his partner, was killed. You ready to Minuti? Yeah, Minuti. When, when Minuti dies, I thought Denzel handled that, that realization and grieving his partner. That was, inc I thought what he did was incredible with that. Larry. Seeing the car and how he responded to it, and then that scene with Matt with uh with Val Kilmer afterwards, when Kilmer's like, "Look, I'm sorry about your partner, but we need you on the team, and then you can get the guy who did it." Yeah, I thought that was a great, great scene. So like that, I thought Caviezel was really, really, really good, and then his main scene there in the interrogation room, you know, that was scary, really scary. Um, Goldberg is great. Uh, it's just it, you know, it it really. Bruce Greenwood, all you know. And when Bruce Greenwood shuts them down, that scene where he yeah. shut them down, it, it, there's so much in it that that worked for me. Yeah, and I think there's something about what's really, I don't know. I mean, so the the part of the movie that I loved, which was all that first forty minutes that I just really was invested in, um, it it really shows what what an ensemble that gets behind something behind a lead actor like Denzel. And if Denzel's inspired, what can happen in the room? Right. Like when all of that is going right. Well, uh, try harder. It's important. That yeah. was like a beautiful example of that. For me, then, uh, I, I just, I guess I just, they made such a good case for this being a serious minded movie that when it turned into kind of a, a Schwarzenegger movie in the middle of it, I was like, oh, I miss this more serious minded you know, methodical procedural thing. And I didn't, I really just didn't need the, 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 the craziness and the action stuff as much. And I, and I gotta say, like, I did have a sticking point with sending him back in time, like sending him back in the microwave oven. I just didn't, I, you know, it's a big leap. That's where my, I didn't suspend my disbelief there. Like, okay. Did you, did I miss something? They sent a piece of paper. The thing isn't really even designed to do this. So they're kind of figuring it out as they go. So they no, send a note and I, then I will, he, and then they send him like. I, I will grant that, that the way they handled that was, was that that could have been handled a lot better. Um, But I was willing to jump over that for the rest of what it did for the story. Because I love. <laughs> I loved this whole idea of him being back there. I loved him appearing in the hospital with the with the note, revive me, right. scribbled on his chest, and the doctors being like, where the hell did this guy come from? Um, and I loved the... Um, I loved the mirror image problem of him knowing about time travel and knowing things and not being able to explain them to her. When you had to tell someone the most important thing in the world, but you knew they'd never believe you. Yeah, that moment. And the mirroring of that at the end when he comes back and he doesn't know about time travel and she does. What if you had to tell someone the most important thing in the world, but you knew they'd never believe you? Yeah. Um, but you know me, I'm a sucker for a love story. 
You are. I mean, I clearly prefer the movie wherein wherein he can't save her, and it's not. It doesn't work out. Like that's my time travel. Movie. Yeah, I, 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 my thing is like you mess with this stuff, it's not going to go right. So okay. you know you're going to so, lose everything. So that's that, that's <laughs> that's the so difference that's between you and I. You become as bad a person as yeah. I am. Yeah. For liking Ralph Meeker. Yeah. In 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 oh, totally. Hammer. <laughs> oh, totally. Totally. When they when this movie became about her having to survive somehow at all costs. Now, okay, I understand no, that. Awesome. Come on. She's got to survive. I just Does she know I'm here? That that to me feels like that to me feels really dated even at what is this 2006 this movie came out. I mean, that to me is like that's like some 80s like early 90s attitudes about like the heroine in the movie. I just felt this was like a little too romancy for my for my taste. Uh, you know, I I, I really do. I am one of those people that has always watched action movies and gone like this hero is literally killing babies in baby carriages on the street to get to his goal of saving this one person. Yeah. Like their he kills a lot of people to save his own ass or to rescue her. And I'm like with those people, I'm like, I'm having lunch at a cafe in Paris. And all of a sudden a guy drives a Fiat through all of these chairs and tables and baguettes are flying everywhere. I mean, that's like in every James Bond movie. I'm always thinking about those people. I'm like, well, what? Those people, they're, they're uh, those are background actors. They don't matter. They're movie fodder. They're movie fodder. Um, Did you know that that was Elle Fanning? Fanning? Yeah. I didn't know that. Amelia told me afterwards and I had to rewind it. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. Elle Fanning. That's pretty amazing. Um, um, what's amazing is she gets like credited for that performance. Yeah. And a character name. I've yeah. had lines and things and done real acting and not gotten credited. <laughs> you know, but all of all of your criticism of the romance in this movie leads to what I picked for the perfect um double feature with this film are you closing are you ending this convo because you're no, just I'm, so just sad i'm not ending the show <laughs> right? but, but what you were talking about leads perfectly into my choice for a double feature for this movie bingo and, what is it you're gonna want to fly to california and smack me topside the head when i tell you what it is i think sleepless in seattle is the perfect double feature with this movie i think i'm about to leave Where they I, I, that's brilliant. I got to tell you, that's that's actually brilliant. They finally get together at the end. They're pretty, destined to be together, and they get together. That's pretty brilliant. Well done. <laughs> well, well done. Ah, oh, good lord. Um, but what about sort of uh, Tony Scott's, which uh, which I thought was, I thought it was brilliant. His um, the, the the cinematography, the shot selection, the editing of the entire opening sequence, setting us up for this disaster, and then the way that is revisited at the end. Yeah, what what are, what are you saying? Are you asking what I thought of it, or I'm asking if you thought <laughs> it was good or if I'm an idiot? No, I thought it was really good. I I, I I've come to. I've always liked Tony Scott's movies. I've come to admire them a little bit more, I guess, uh, like take them a little bit more seriously as time's gone by. He made other movies than this. Yeah, yeah, he made a lot of other movies, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you do know who he is, right? Yes, I know who he is. Okay, and you know his brother is Ridley Scott. Yes. Okay. The Of, of the Ridley Scott t-shirt fame. Don't you know, know what you're talking about. What you don't, that, you don't know that story about the crew on a Red Ridley Scott movie? Oh no. There's a story that one day the entire crew on one of Ridley Scott's movies showed up with t-shirts that said, um uh not Roy Rogers. Um <laughs> this yeah. is going so well. Roy <laughs> Rogers. <laughs> yeah, Roy, Roy Rogers never met Ridley Scott. 
I'm confused now. Wasn't it Roy Rogers? Are you talking to me? I don't know what else to tell you. I feel very, very close to you right now. <laughs> Not, was it Roy? Who was, who was the, the cowboy philosopher who said, I never met a man I didn't like? Well, I guess that was Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers just said, I, never I mean, I'm not up on my Roy Rogers t- trivia, to be totally honest. So, but. Yeah, so I never met a man I didn't like, was the famous saying. And the entire crew showed up one day on a, on a Ridley Scott movie with T-shirts that said, Roy Rogers never met Ridley Scott. <laughs> um. That's great. I have not heard that he is a delight to work with. <laughs> That's never been said. No. By anybody. Yeah. No, um, those are things, those are things that I did know. That those are on the very short list of things that I did know. Uh about the t-shirt. No, that 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 Tony Scott and Ridley Scott They're were brothers. Guys. Much of the way in years to come that people will be saying, did you know that 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 Anthony Arkin and Matthew Arkin were brothers? I thought that was all a gag. Yeah. Um, I love, uh, you know, I love things about that style. Will Rogers. Of, it's Will Rogers. Not yeah, Will thank Will. you. I was going to say, I didn't sound, I, Will Rogers. Roy okay. Rogers. Roy Rogers, Roy Rogers. The hamburger guy. I think so. Yeah. I, I got really confused. I like left the show for a minute. I was like <laughs> completely out. Um, <laughs> um, speaking of, uh, of Tony and, uh, and Ridley, um, what I thought was kind of cool was this. I wonder if Tony Scott took this movie because he could actually like try to better his brother on that Blade Runner photo computer sequence. This is like an extreme extrapolation of that Blade Runner sequence where he puts the photo into the computer and he's like three degrees to the left, you know, up a quarter thing. And it's clicking into this photo and getting more detail as it goes. You remember that? Yeah, maybe. Um, this was like uh, 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 that on steroids. And it was, that, ma- was th- that was masterfully done, that whole suit. Yeah, it's really, really well done. I mean, this is beautifully, beautifully constructed, you know, technically. And it's also like, once again, I just got to say, it's a pleasure to see stuff shot on on that kind of celluloid. Um, what about... Um... <laughs> That was a, that's a great moment. Great moment. You're ma- you're all making me look bad because you're picking these things that make the movie look so much better than it actually, technically, really is. Oh, now, now. Let's um, talk about explosions and stunts. What about them? It's uh, it's an eyeful. I mean, I was pretty astounded when we saw it last night. I was uh, I was impressed. I don't get impressed very often. It's uh, God knows enhanced, I'm sure, by all kinds of things. But it's a real it's a real fireball happening with a lot of people involved, and it looks very very dangerous and yeah. huge. And can we talk about propellers? That's my yes. favorite shot in the movie. Her swimming past the propeller. Her swimming past the propeller is yeah, pretty astounding. It's gorgeous, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm just gonna say seventy five million dollars to you, and then you're gonna get a beautiful propeller shot. <laughs> but, I mean, that's how I feel. Like honestly, the that kind of thing should goddamn be absolutely perfect and amazing at seventy five million dollars. Just wow. the way I feel about it. You get a you get a DP that good. You get a tank that big. You can pay for the best tank. You can you can get all the the everything you want. There's no excuse for it not to just be fantastic. So yeah, they did a great job. You know what this movie miss was missing from this movie? Don't get me started. In through <laughs> yes. beyond. That relates a little bit to my uh, recasting. Um, oh, I want to hear this. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, did you do a recast? That was an amazing shot. Yeah. What they just showed for those of you on the podcast was the the car exploding off of the deck of the of the uh, the barge, the, the car that held, that holds the. It's impressive. I mean, technically, there's this. Technically, this movie is breathtaking. It's really, yes. but you know, that's partly what I'm saying. It, 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 Tony Scott made some really exceptionally fantastic-looking movies. I mean, he's he was known for it. They're glossy. They're beautifully. The sound design is incredible. Stephen Jules Rubin says, "You guys are really brothers." It's true, man. It's true. As bad as Matthew it. feels about it, it's true. <laughs> it's one of the great joys of my life um and so you know like there's a certain part of me that's like uh yeah of course you know it's gonna be great it's it's got you know the same team that brought you man on fire and and uh oh. you know un unstoppable and i think it was called unstoppable with the train Did you ever see that yes i love that one man this... on fire with the other fanning the other yeah, fanning. yeah all right dakota's in that um, and this, uh, I, I'm just gonna, you know, look, I heard the, the writers, uh, we got some notes today about the backstory of this. The writers apparently had some contention with how the film turned out. They felt that Tony Scott leaned too heavily onto action stuff. And they thought some of the subtlety had been missing from some, from the sci-fi. I think that I totally agree with that. I think you kind of maybe see the point of that a little bit. I, you said, point of that. I don't need that car chase. It's pretty, that, that really did. I did check out for that. I was like, this is out of another movie. Well, I, 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 don't... I mean, the, the, the problem, one of the problems with, with, with it though, is that it's it, take it out of this movie. It's an extraordinary sequence. It just doesn't belong in this movie necessarily i it, it i it, i would argue that it's 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 extraordinarily well put together but it's also it, it it doesn't keep me grounded enough in reality like i just don't think at those speeds anybody would really be able to do even three seconds of what he's trying to do so i feel like bringing it somewhere like just take the accelerator off just a little bit let's get this no, no, down I'm really, to I'm a good driver i'm a really good driver well okay but you're not in this movie that's true. So we're back to square one. <laughs> um, I think as I know, I, I all, all praise to Denzel Washington at his prime. You know, he looks fantastic. He looks like the quintessential, you know, movie star hero. But I got to say what I also love about him is how relaxed he is about it. Like his wardrobe never looks fussed over. He's he's clearly strong and he's in good shape, but he's not like he doesn't have like a Nautilus body. He's not like you know yeah. ripped he's to shreds. A regular guy that you really he look looks like a real person, and and um, Who albeit much breath. much better looking than most people are. Wow. Speak uh, but he doesn't seem to fuss a lot about you know the he just has a, a security about how he is on camera which is uh which is really yeah. cool he does have a strange moment at the very very end though i think don't you think his last beat is a little bit a little bit odd literally his last moment she goes like you know would you what would you do if and he has the you know if you she goes if you had something to tell me that i wouldn't believe what would you do and he goes i'd try and that's the whole riff they have with each other and then he has a moment where he's like He's experiencing some deja vu, I guess, in the car. He's like, yeah. oh, he's getting some vibes about it. And then he goes, nah. Yeah. <laughs> and drives away. I'm like, what? Yeah, right. Why did you say that? Well, you know, deja vu, deja vu. Vu chade. Yeah. Oh my God. That's how that's I love how, that moment. 
I loved coming back to that moment of that woman crying about my daughter was on that ship. My daughter was on that ship. And then she gets her daughter back at the end. I loved that. It's your kind of thing. It is my kind of thing. Uh, this is an interesting bit of trivia, not really about this movie, but I think kind of interesting is that there's a sequence in the film where, where during a scene, there's a newscast playing in the background where they are reading off the names of the victims of the blast. And many of the, you know, the victims of the class of the blast are, you know, midshipmen, first class, so and so, because there was a party of of sailors um, on the on the ship going to Mardi Gras, and um, they uh, one of the names they announce is Chaplain Rabbi Benjamin Mendelssohn meaning a, a chaplain in the United States Navy. And my grandfather, because people listening may be confused when I say my grandfather, because Tony and I we're not related. But Tony and I are brothers, but we have different biological mothers. Uh, my grandfather was the first Jewish chaplain, rabbi chaplain in the United States Navy. So when I heard that line, Chaplain Rabbi Benjamin Mendelssohn, I thought that was, that struck me as very interesting because. Well, you also don't hear that a lot. That's, you don't hear Chaplain Rabbi. No. Like Chaplain, Chaplain Tapman from yeah. 22, you know, it's. Right. A, Cha a, Charlie a Chaplain or Rabbi. A Catholic or a Protestant, you know, and the fact that they made it a rabbi in the it's South, cool. which is interesting. So I thought that was, that was, uh, that was interesting. Um, who, uh, who would I be? Um, oh, well, other moments that jumped out at me, things that I loved in the movie in terms of the dialogue, I loved the moment, as I said, I need her to matter to you that her father says, I loved the, the, uh, coming back to the trope of we lose everything that we care about that Denzel says to Val Kilmer. Or no, Val Kilmer says, and then and then it comes back, and somebody else says, "We lose everything that we care about." Those are your words, Val Kilmer says to him before he makes his decision. And I also love when Val Kilmer decides to let them go do the bad thing they're not supposed to do, which is send Denzel back in time. And he just says, "Do me a favor. When you finish, turn out the lights." Yeah, all good stuff, man. Val Kilmer just kind of underplaying it, just kind of supporting. It's so cool to see him in that role. Um, and another moment that really struck me in that first sequence with Denzel after the disaster, when he's walking around seeing the disaster and he hears a phone ringing and he pulls out his cell phone and it's not his. And he looks and it's a, bo a body bag and that there's a cell phone and his realization that somebody is calling that person and that person is not picking up. That was really powerful to me. I love the, um, uh, my favorite scene really may be in its entirety, like not just for the acting, which I love the Caviezel in an interrogation scene and the night ferry ride with Al Kilmer. But the autopsy scene I think is altogether the best scene in the movie. I thought it was fantastic. Um, and there, it has my favorite shot in the film too. When they go to blacklight looking for residue of the masking tape. That's the gaffer's tape. That's been on her mouth Uh huh. and using the black light, he can see residue of chemicals on her face and clothes. And, um, there's a moment when it goes to black and you cut to his face uh -huh. and you just see his eyes have gone like phosphorescent. Everything yeah. looks completely uh, crazy. And it's as if he's like looking back in time somehow, even just there in the autopsy room, you know, um, I, uh, I love that scene. I thought that was really, really well done. I loved how he Denzel had clearly, you see the research that a guy like Denzel does, I think in a scene like that, where, 
he's taken the Polaroids from the guy as they're coming out of the camera and he's yeah. placing them down on the table. Yes. Without really making the big thing out of it. Like it's just details that he's done this a thousand times that yeah. you can also see like his a, line later in the movie after the autopsy scene, when somebody asks him if he knew her, and he says, I held her hand once. I, my favorite line. I was going to, yeah, that's that's a great line. Just rough. Really rough. It's really great. He held her hand when she was dead and her fingers had been Yeah. Shot. Yeah. It's a great line. And um, and I think my favorite one in the movie. Um, Who, um, well, you said that you had done some recasting. I, I didn't get around to it, but oh no, I did. Uh, likewise, I didn't get a around to a double bill, although I could probably come up with one. Recasting, I went recast to the past, so I I I, I decided to recast this in the seventies rather than now. Okay, because I, I mean I still cast Denzel in this part, so yeah. it's kind of like you know it's not that yeah, long ago. Well, why? Um, so what I'm going to say is we're going to cast. Um, Ken Foray as the in the Denzel role. You know who Ken Foray is? Uh, he was in uh, Day of the Dead and From Beyond. He's a uh, he's a an actor from the seventies from genre movies and zombie movies. He's great. Okay. Um, Matt Craven would be played by Dennis Franz. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Val Kilmer would be played by James Brolin. Not Josh Brolin, but James Brolin, Josh's father. Adam Goldberg would be played by Fernando Ray. Because he would be the European, in the 70s, he'd be a European sophisticated technology guy who'd come and have made... Well, I can't say I wasn't expecting this call. Right. Adam has been fired and replaced by Fernando fired. Ray. And in fact, they they're, they're, they physic they're similar. They have a resemblance to each other. I yeah. love Fernando Ray. Uh, and Jim Caviezel, Richard Jordan gets the Jim Caviezel part. Richard Jordan is Jim Caviezel. Wow. Jim Richard Jordan usually plays good guys. Uh, depends. Well, not all the time. He played quite a bad guy in um, in uh, well, not a bad guy, but. Kind of a thug in the Yakuza. He's pretty scary in that. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. He's played psychotics. Whatever. Give the guy a chance. He's an actor. What is your problem? Why are you blocking Richard Jordan from getting work? Who am I going to play and who are you going to play? Why do I have to like honor all the actors you like, but Richard Jordan just gets crapped on by you? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So you didn't do a recast. I did not do a recast, but I did decide who uh, I would be and you would be. Oh, please. You're the assistant eating the candy wrapper. Or eating who, who his assistant who writes the name down on the candy wrapper, the, the phone message down on the candy wrapper. <laughs> Wait, what's the line, though? Uh, is it the guy who says, yeah, is it the beginning? The guy who's like, it was a he's just like, it happened at 10, 11 45. He's like, no, this message is from 10 30. Yeah, that guy. That's that was you. I cast you in that part. Well, I cast me as that initially. That's me. I can hear me. That's your part because of the bifocals of the glasses line. He goes, and I'm wearing my glasses. Yeah, right. Okay. That's your line. Okay. And I cast me as her dad. Okay. I, 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 I buy that. Father. You might even have made me believe that you were really grieving. <laughs> no, I think he did a great job. Oh, wow. I um, I just uh, it was handled strange, a little bit strange. Um, I believe that uh, you are the you are the guy who has his glasses, and I have one line in the most awkward scene in the film. <laughs> okay, where Denzel goes to the uh, you know the, the the aftermath of an explosion, and there's fire and debris, and he's like looking around the rubble and some random somewhat out of shape uh emt worker comes by with a with like a gas mask and he's like uh hey you want a mask and Dantel <laughs> looks at him like no get out of here and the guy's like all right that's my part i come about to leave 
<laughs> you and everybody else, Denzel, nobody wants to sit here and hear this. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, so do you have a way to see this film that you feel would be the perfect way to see it? I didn't get to that. I did. Here's a monitor, right? <laughs> now the monitor is broken. That's the best way to see this movie. <laughs> on a broken monitor. Uh, no, I think that the best way to see it is in the rear view video, video monitor of your car. The backup, the backup the video. Um, do you know my my story about not this movie, but about the phrase deja vu? Because I have a good story about the phrase deja vu. I don't know this story. I was working on a play once um, with uh, on. Uh, the actor playing my wife was not the brightest bulb in the in the firmament, light in the sky. However, brightest whatever, brightest bulb in the chandelier. <laughs> you know, you get what I'm saying. Yes. And uh, she she always said things wrong. You know, like sayings wrong and stuff like that. And um, I was talking to the stage manager once about things that people say wrong. And this woman playing my wife overheard me talking to the stage manager and she said, oh yeah, my mom uh, made a really funny misappropriation once, <laughs> which is the wrong word. <laughs> we were talking about malapropism. Yes. She said, my mother made a really funny misappropriation once and the stage manager and I said, really? And she said, yeah, I was upset about something. And my mother said to me, well, honey, you know, as the French say, deja vu, deja vu. <laughs> so I decided to make up a little song mm -hmm. to go along with that, which goes like this. Deja vu, deja vu, whatever I did, I do. Whoever I know, I knew. Deja vu, deja vu. That's really that's, good. That's that's my little song. I, I think, think that, that that puts your talent for punning to its best use. That I think that should be the new theme song for this movie. That should have been the soundtrack. Absolutely, like Peggy Lee singing it or something. Yes. Is, aren't we watching Peggy Lee got married in two weeks? <laughs> no, it's a different different movie. Um. um so yeah, we pretty much covered this. I think you know, uh, no one has yet answered me why Serpico is the running the uh, the the spy agency. I I thought this Serpico was in the seventies. And uh, next week, you should tune in next week uh, because next week we will be talking about uh, Deja Vu, starring Denzel Washington. Um, where... I had a couple. Pro I felt like it fell off and then like it just dropped off i'm sorry we're just what if you had to tell someone the most important thing in the world but you knew they'd never believe you there you go um so we should just start the we should make people watch this episode on an endless loop yeah well they're gonna anyway that's part of the meta brilliance of it all but next week we are doing uh time after time and we have a very special guest joining us we have a yeah, right, quite everybody at him. Yeah, we got a special, we have a really special guest. Should we announce who the special guest is now or make, make it be a surprise? I think we should announce who it is because we want people to tune in. Like, if we, we announce it next week, they'll be maybe not available. Nicholas Meyer. Oh, who wrote shit. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Nicholas Meyer, who wrote Time After Time. And wrote the seven percent solution. Who wrote and directed time after time? Wrote and directed time after time. An incredibly uh, wonderful writer, wonderful director, and a wonderful I human. D hey yo, man, they got lookers. Do you know what else he directed? What else did he direct, Anthony? You're you you you, you do know that he directed your favorite Star Trek movie? Yes, I do know that. Okay, Nick. Nicholas Meyer, director of Wrath of Khan. Wrath of Khan. Is going to be Bingo. this show talking to us about talking to us next his stuff, his career. Us. And, and you know, I'm excited about that. It's going I'm to be just pretty, excited. It's going to be pretty exciting. Um, so uh, that, I think, wraps it up for this week. 
Uh, and then the following week will be Peggy Lee got married. No, Peggy Sue got married. I'm sorry. Peggy Lee got married. Um, Will Rogers. Oh, I didn't see these comments. Oh, God, look. There's lots of comments. Announce case I got offered a job which I shouldn't take yet. And I do want to answer one comment from uh, Camille Renner, who wondered if the grandfather, the rabbi, was the same one who wrote Black and White. No, that was uh, our dad's father. Uh, David Arkin wrote the song Black and White. Um, yes. So that was a wrote the lyric wrote the lyrics and the lyrics. Three Dog Night, right? Wrote the music. No, Three Dog Night recorded it. Uh, the music was written by Earl Robinson. Oh, okay. All right. Good to know he that. Somehow related to us by marriage. Yeah, some some crazy way. Some crazy nutty. Um. So uh, that's it for Denzel and Deja Vu. And uh, if you uh, enjoyed this episode, then just watch it again and say to yourself, I feel like I've yeah. seen this before. Because you know what? It doesn't get better the second time. It stays exactly the same. You cannot yeah. change history. You Where's can't. my audio? All right. Good night, everybody. Where's Larry? <laughs> Where is Larry? You Agent Minuti? Where is Larry? Where's Larry? <laughs> I'm asking that for years. Where's Larry? <laughs> That's right, kind of, we have to use that now for where's Larry? Larry's is our new theme. Where's Larry? And good night. <laughs>